minivans. They're the vehicles that smart, self-assured parents pack their brood into because nothing makes life easier than these machines. Even if Chrysler can't figure out why otherwise intelligent people would shun vans, it's given them yet another reason to embrace the Pacifica. No, not good looks, though this is stylish for the segment. I'm talking tech. The hybrid lets families dip their toe into the electric car lifestyle. The E signifies this is a plug-in hybrid, so uh, that endless list of chores? It won't include trips to the gas station nearly as often. Marketing is so important. I was talking to a Chrysler executive, and he told me the company purposely didn't emphasize that this was a plug-in hybrid because it confused people. You know, that sort of makes sense. Think about the Chevy Volt. Great car, great concept. It didn't sell very well. Chrysler, on the other hand, is seeing brisk sales of the Pacifica Hybrid. FYI, my father bought one of these and had to wait over a month to take delivery. Here's the 411 on the hybrid. Fully gassed up and charged, it will cover over 500 miles. The estimated all-electric range of 32 miles is made possible by a 16 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack. It's stashed in the bays that the mid-row stow-and-go chairs normally drop into. That feature is exclusive to Chrysler and Dodge, but the hybrid loses that flexibility. How hard is it to remove the seats? Not any worse than other minivans. Uh, weighs about as much as a five-year-old. We've all carried those enough around, haven't we? This will be dad's chore. <laughs> you think? Assisting the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 uh, that runs the Atkinson cycle in the hybrid's case are two electric motors. In total, the system provides 260 horsepower. Hopefully your family life is as calm and quiet as this. Oftentimes on startup, there isn't any sound. Just some distant whirring. An efficiency gauge signals when you're driving green, or not. There's no way to force gas or electric power. Think of it as one less life choice to make. Those electric motors are embedded into the transmission, so there are no gears. Chrysler has dubbed it E-Flight Electrically Variable. Electric motors have lots of torque off the line if you want to give the kids a thrill. Zero to 60 is a brisk eight seconds, but that torque and the fact that this is a large vehicle makes it feel much quicker. Like all EVs, this one is most efficient in warm weather and stop and go city driving. It's nearly freezing outside and to get to this neighborhood, which is much fancier than mine, I had to travel about 15 miles on the highway and I saw about 22 miles of all electric range this morning. Now normally when it's warmer, I'm seeing closer to 28 or 30. My father, who wisely lives in a warmer, drier climate, regularly gets about 31. He's buying much less gasoline now because by charging every night, he gets about 200 miles of electric range each week. That's 11,000 miles a year. In the real world, I'm averaging about 28 miles per gallon after the battery is depleted, which is much better than Siena, Odyssey, and Sedona, which overall average around 22 mpg. In pure EV mode, this fan is very, very quiet. So once the battery is depleted, you can hear the engine whirring and the system doing its stuff. Stuff being a technical term, but uh, it's not bad. Just so you know, there's more going on aurally up front than any other van, because this is the only one available in electrified form in any way. Test drive both powertrains to see how you like the dynamic. The semi-autonomous driving features that this car has, like lane keep assist and radar assisted cruise control, work pretty well. These are in a $1,000 package that bundles stuff like forward automatic emergency braking and a self-parking feature. It's only available on the top limited model. Wish it was available on all trims. However, blind spot warning and cross path detection are standard across the board. Would I rather be driving a Porsche Cayman? Of course I would, but those don't seat seven, do they? This is roomy, visibility is good, it's comfortable. And it handles pretty well, too. It weighs about 570 pounds more than a standard Pacifica, but the battery ballast is down low, so it slings around curves with panache, uh, for a family hauler, anyway. In some hybrids, the brake pedal feel, as it transitions from regenerative to the actual physical brakes, can be a little bit lumpy. This one's pretty good. 
true, all this goodness comes in a van, and they've developed a mommy mobile stigma. In a way, that's odd, considering these days, most women are driving SUVs in crossovers, and those don't get painted with the same brush. When your friends and neighbors find out how technically advanced this vehicle is, they might be very envious of your van. And unless they're driving an Audi or Mercedes, they'll admire the interior as well. For a mainstream brand, this is a nicely trimmed out space with good looking materials. The optional roof is nearly all glass. These rigs excel at squirreling things away and Pacifica is no different, though the center console loses some depth because the lower part of it is sacrificed for use in the middle row. <laughs> what we won't do for our children, huh? Cup holders and charge ports are plentiful, and there's wireless phone charging too. Even a tray for umbrellas because uh, you will be watching the kids' soccer games <laughs> even in the rain. There are redundant sound system controls on the back of the wheel to reduce the clutter on the front. Parents don't need anything more to complicate their lives, and the Uconnect interface is pretty good at keeping the features simple and organized. And like a growing number of user interfaces, it can be configured the way that you want for familiarity. There's Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, and in that safety package, a way to tell if the kids left their bikes laying around the car. Pacifica Hybrid is a seven-seater. There's no bench option. The two captain's chairs here seem to be more comfortable than the stow-and-go seats in the standard Pacifica. This van has more plug-ins, much better heating, window treatments, and entertainment options than my first apartment. Honestly, with the built-in games for the kids to play, plus a high-speed Wi-Fi internet hotspot to tap into if you're up for the monthly charge, there's no way anyone is getting bored in here. Vans are lower to the ground than SUVs and crossovers, so getting in and out is easier for smaller kids. I don't know about three adults, but two will ride just fine in the Pacifica's third row. I have the mid row set about midway, so everybody has enough leg room. Thigh support's pretty good, and I do like this sunroof. Another USB port? More cup holders? More sunshades? Uh, this space pretty much has it all. I will point out that the middle position belt design can get cumbersome if you drop the third row often. Imagine this is a squirming toddler and your keys are in your pocket or purse. Can't do that with an SUV or any other minivan for that matter. Now, oftentimes you can only get three or four packs of this stuff behind the third row of a large SUV or crossover. The Pacifica? Uh, wait for it, 10, that's impressive. Crossovers vary quite a bit in this regard. The Chevy Traverse can hold six, Volkswagen Atlas five, and Honda Pilot three, if you wanna know. One of the beauties of vans is that they are giant boxes, and that shape is great for schlepping a lot of cargo. Drop the third row, which is easy enough for a kindergartner to do, and the resulting space is enormous. I would estimate that behind the second row, 28 packs of the two-ply will fit, which is far more than I can physically bring out. The crossover champ, Buick Enclave, holds 20. Again, the hybrid's second row does not drop into the floor. A warning, a vans are like pickups. Once your friends know that you have one, you'll be very popular when big things need to be moved. Ask me how I know. Batteries, the capacity of the one in the Pacifica Hybrid, are expensive, so the sticker price of this van is considerably higher than the gas version. However, there's a $7,500 federal tax credit on the hybrid, so the base price of $41,400 is effectively $33,900. That's some $400 less than the comparable gas model, though it gets complicated when rebates are accounted for. And that's before any state electric vehicle incentives kick in, depending on where you live. Pacifica is not available with all-wheel drive, and it's not an SUV. Those are the two biggest strikes against it, with buyers who can't think outside the box, as it were, and consider a van. This one is arguably handsome, loaded with practicality, packed with thoughtful features, and is a conversation starter with tech bros. That, and it eliminates a lot of trips to the gas station. Spend that extra time with kids. They grow up fast.
Something to think about, many electric cars have a hidden cost, and that's the price to install a level 2 charging system. The great thing about plug-in hybrids is, you can get by on using standard 110 currents because the gas engine eliminates any range anxiety. My household now has two plug-in hybrids. My wife bought a Chevy Volt after giving our daughter the Kia Soul. We both charge on standard current and have no issues at all. It would be very hard for us to install a 220 line in our detached garage because of the location. When I wrote a story for the New York Times about minivans and how awesome they are, I talked to the folks at Chrysler, Honda, and Toyota and found out this very interesting fun fact. The research shows that men actually kind of like vans and don't mind driving them. Guys like the utility. For example, it was very easy for me to get this new rug into the back here. It's something that wouldn't fit in any one of my cars. Oh, and while I was shopping, I was able to juice up. Typically, they found it's women that don't like the perceived vibe of vans. And let's not forget, it's women who steer most of the vehicle purchases these days. In other words, happy wife, happy life. Hope you got something out of my look at the 2019 Chrysler Pacifica E-Hybrid. If I haven't made myself clear, this is a terrific rig for those who need to haul a large clan efficiently. You really can't do much better than this. And if you're worried about what your friends will think because you drive a minivan, I don't think they really care. And if they do, maybe you need new friends. Just saying. That's driven. I'm Tom Volk.